So today I'm going to show you guys how to coat your very first screen. So you're going to receive a 20 by 22 inch framed aluminum screen um, that's going to be brand new. And the very first thing we're going to have to do is decrease it to remove some of that oily residue film that comes on the, on the screen from the factory. So you're going to bring it into, this is um, the screen printing area and your ID card will open the door. You're gonna kind of come in here and there are three different colors of spray. You're gonna see this chart over here. And it's gonna tell you which color means which thing. You're gonna degrease the screen. The first thing you're gonna use is the degreaser. It is the white color um, duct tape. So I'm gonna find my degreaser right here and take my screen over to the sink. Clean it against the back wall. There is a light switch to turn these lights on to see what you're doing on the screen. I'm going to take the spray bottle and give it a really good and even coat on both the front and the back of the screen. Great. Always putting my supplies back where I found them. Taking a little bit of a rag or a sponge. I'm just going to go ahead and rub in that degreaser so it gets to all of the parts of the screen on both front and back. All right, we have degreased our screen. Now I'm going to rinse off the degreaser. So over here we have the spray nozzle. This is the only one that you're really going to use over here. You don't need the faucet for anything. Um, I'm gonna make sure that the water is, you know, not too hot or too cold. So I have both the hot and the cold turned in a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and spray off the degreaser. student to come and use a rag that has degreaser and use it for something different. Bring that out, let it dry, and take my rinse screen over here against the wall of the fan, lean it against the wall so that there's a little space in between the screen and the wall, go ahead and turn the fan on. This is going to dry very quickly. It's important that you don't leave your screen for days and days and days. Just make sure if it's drying the fan is on, you come back and get it in 20 minutes or however long and turn the fan off. Okay, now let's go coat our first screen. Okay, so this is sort of like a cooking show. I've got a different screen that's ready to be um, coated that isn't being dried by the fan. And we've brought it here into the emulsion in the exposing room. So the very first thing that I'm going to do probably before I wash my screen is I'm going to come over to this refrigerator and I'm going to pull out a container of photo emulsion. So you can see that they're in these black canisters that look like this and they're cold. Obviously they're in the refrigerator. I have gone ahead and taken one out beforehand that's been sitting at room temperature for 20 minutes. So the reason is that the temperature affects the viscosity and the colder that the photo emulsion is, the harder it is to coat. So you wanna kind of let it out, let it warm up a little bit before you start to coat. So I have my photo emulsion out. My second thing is that I need a coater. So I need a vehicle to put my photo emulsion onto the screen. So I'm gonna come over here, I have three size options. I have a super small, small, medium, and large coater. Um, I just know from experience that our screens at this size need the small coater, but you're welcome to come up and measure and see which coater fits comfortably inside your screen. So obviously the medium coater is too big. We want to coat in the longest direction because we just need more space. It's easier if you give, if you give yourself more space. So here we can see that the medium coater is too big. So we'll take our small coater and come back over here to the coating table. All right, 
So conveniently, there's a like a sticky rubber mat pad which will keep your screen from sliding around. You have your coder. I'm going to do this over here so you can see it. I'm going to open up my photo emulsion with a lot of muscle. Good lord. Got it. Okay. It's been all summer since we've opened up, huh? So our photo emulsion is green. You can see inside the canister. And we want to make sure that it's full, right? We want it to be at least halfway full. You need more than you think to code. If for some reason your canister is empty, make sure to let Stevie know and she will replace it for you. Okay, so I am going to now pour my emulsion into my scoop coder and I'm going to fill the coder to this, this channel in the coder about halfway. So this is way more emulsion than you need to actually coat your screen. You'll see you end up scraping most of this off, but it's important that you start with enough and you will soon see why. All right, I'm gonna put what I'm not using over on the table. Now, there are two different sides of the scoop coder, and when you come and look and feel this, you'll see it very clearly. One is a little fatter and a little rounder, and one is a little thinner and a little sharper, okay? So I'm gonna coat with the thicker side first, scrape with the thinner side, okay? Now, you'll also see that the sides of the scoop coder are on these kind of 20 degree angles, this is important because I'm going to rest the scoop coder so that one of the angles is flush against the face of the screen. So that's the very first thing that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring the scoop coder to the screen. I'm holding the scoop coder with my right hand. I'm holding the screen with my left hand. I'm bringing the coder onto the screen so that that lip is touching and I'm lifting up so those 20 degree angle sides are actually flush with the screen. So you don't have to hold it with your strength. You don't have to worry about being wobbly. All of those are supports there for you to evenly coat your screen. So keeping those sides flush with the screen and tilting back so a little bit of the emulsion falls out, I'm going to lift my arm slowly up the entire face of the screen. Try to go in a straight line here. And when I reach the top, I'm gonna to start to tip the coder back to me and also tip the screen back to me so the extra emulsion falls back into the scoop coder. And I'm gonna lift that away. So now you can see I have coded one side of my screen. I'm gonna flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. So, flush with the screen, point it back. All the way up. Once I reach the top, tilting back, letting the excess fall back into the coder. Okay, so now I get to use that thinner scrapey side. I'm gonna flip my coder around, still holding with my right hand, still starting on the inside of the screen. I'm gonna just going in the order which I did for the beginning. Instead of holding in a back now, I'm gonna hold the screen towards myself and I'm going to take the edge of the skinny one, and I'm going to scrape off the excess. You can see all that excess falling back into the coder, all the way up the screen. So right now I'm not adding any additional emulsion, I'm actually removing, so there's a very, very thin layer of emulsion on my screen. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the front. Actually very satisfying watch and that's it so what I'm left with is a very thin green layer of emulsion so when I'm looking at this emulsion I'm not seeing any valleys and peaks meaning that thicker and thinner areas of emulsion I'm seeing a very thin emulsion sometimes it's helpful to hold it up to the light I don't know if you can see and then you can clearly see that there's no dark green areas that all the emulsion is one solid color okay this is perfect, this is ready to dry. So come with me and we're gonna go dry it and I'll show you where to put it. So through this door, lights turn on automatically, you don't have to worry about that. This is the screen storage room. This door always stays closed. Now the photo emulsion is sensitive to light. You'll notice that the lights are all yellow in the screen print area and 
and that is because if you have normal LED or light bulb lights, it's going to start to expose and harden this emulsion. So we don't want that to happen. We want it to stay soft. Come into the screen storage area. And here we have a lot of screens that are being dried of, other, of your classmates. It is super important right now that you are respectful of other people's screens. Um, you're going to find an empty place and lay that screen down. And it can just dry there for the next, you know, ideally 24 hours. If you have any um, bulky emulsion, drippy emulsion inside your frame that was um, a result of your coating, if you put it in here and it's still dripping, if you haven't taken the time to clean your frame, it will drip on a classmate's screen, ruining their coat of emulsion, having, making them start over again. So these are the joys of communal working and we just want to be really respectful of each other's screens. We want to make sure that we keep the door closed when we leave, just in case this big light goes on, it doesn't ruin any of the screens in the closet. Okay, one last very important step we need to clean up. So we're going to come back. We have uh, spatulas by the coders that are ready for this purpose. I'm going to take all that excess emulsion. Remember that we didn't need too much, and I'm putting it right back into the emulsion container. And I'm going to, you know, this stuff is expensive. So I'm going to be really careful to reserve as much as possible, have as little waste as possible. So I'm going to take some time and carefully put the photo emulsion back into the original container and not make a huge mess. That part is up for today. So once I think I've gotten every single last drop in that I possibly can, I'm going to take it over to the sink and use warm water to wash it out. So it is water soluble. It will wash off of your clothes. It will wash off of your hands if you get it on your hands. Um, it's not super toxic. It's not the kind of thing that I want sitting on my skin for a long time either. So be careful about that. Once the spatula is clean, it's going to the exact same place where you got it. sponges that are here to help clean. Make sure that you're getting the emulsion out of all of those corners that like loves to stick and stay. But the most important thing to clean is the lips and edges of the coders. Because you saw how flush they needed to be with the screen. If you have a dry piece of emulsion on there and the next person goes to use the coder, they're going to either you know, have a line in their emulsion, which could be problematic, but worst case scenario, it could cause a hole or a tear in their screen. Just want to make sure to avoid that at all costs. All right, all clean, coders clean. I'm going to return it to where I found it in a small place. I'm going to take a wet rag and I'm going to wipe off the edges and the lip of the container before I put the lid back on and put it back in the refrigerator. You saw the hard time that I had opening this container of photo emulsion and we want to make sure that the next person that uses it doesn't have that same problem. Okay, so this is all cleaned up. Posting my photo emulsion. Putting my photo emulsion back in the fridge. And last but not least, wiping off the countertop. And wiping off the table. Now I didn't drip any emulsion, but I'm still gonna wipe the table off because it's a good practice. But it's possible you did drip emulsion, and it's possible that emulsion got onto this rubber pad. So it's important that take this whole pad over to the sink. Wash it off. Make sure there's no residual emulsion. You can imagine how that really accumulates. All right, good job. You have, you have coated your first screen.